the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name.
Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you've given me. Dear Lord, thank you for giving me another day. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for letting me come and worship you today. God, just please help me. Please help me go in the right direction. Lead me in the right path. God, I just want to thank you for helping everyone. Most of us every day. Thank you for waking up my family. Waking up the ill.
But we are here with the Holy Spirit who will guide us in this worship experience. And now we will worship God through our tithes and our offerings. So I ask you now if the officers of the day will come forward, bring in our offering baskets as we prepare ourselves to give. Knowing that we give, guided by the Holy Spirit, who leads us in all that we do, let us pray. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would speak to each of us right now. We pray that you, Holy Spirit, will determine the amount. Speak to us, showing us how we can help to further your kingdom. God, you have blessed us with so much. And now we return unto you what is yours. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Everyone would stay at this time and follow the directions of the ushers.
life in McDonald's, you guys remember a time when he ever took off? So this is a much needed vacation. We all need rest. Amen. We need rest. This journey can be weary. It's time. We need balance.
retitle this sermon. I'm going to say, I'm going to title, retitle it and call it Pray Hard for Our Children and Don't Give Up. Pray Hard for Our Children and Don't Give Up. If you were to look through, through spiritual eyes, if you were to look through spiritual eyes and see what's going on today, you would no doubt see that there is a spirit of wickedness trying to take over. The prophet of Zechariah had a vision. He saw the vision. He saw this woman that represented a spirit of wickedness in a basket. It's in Zechariah chapter 5. And he pushed her, her head down in the basket. And he pushed the lid down to cover his mouth. And he, and he saw two women that, that lived in the basket between heaven and earth. And he asked them, where are you taking the basket? And he said, back to Babylon. And they said, back to Babylon to build a house for it. When it's ready, the basket will be set there in its place. See, would you, you know, you would think today that we're living in modern, that modern day Babylon. And you would think that we're living in a sphere where where, where this Babylon spirit has been loose. So prayer warriors, it's time to pray and not give up. See, there is one in the Bible that gives us hope for our children and how they can survive living in modern day Babylon. And that one is through the prophet Daniel. We learn from him how to pray and not give up. He also stands as another one who's a true intercessor and a prayer warrior. See, I would like to draw your attention to the prophet Daniel. The life of Daniel is an incredible study tool for our children. From the whole 70 years that Judah was in captivity, Daniel was there from start to finish. He came in there from about 15 years old. He spent the rest of his life, even though uh, they were released to leave um, and go back to Judah. He stayed in Babylon. He spent the rest, most of his life in Babylon. And to all the children that are here, that are 18 years and under, here's what you can learn from Daniel. You can still, but you can still live a Christian life even while living in an ungodly world. You can learn from Daniel how you can use your God-given wisdom to maneuver in dangerous situations. From Daniel, you, you can learn that you can that if you are ever falsely accused about anything, stand firm and hold your ground and watch the Lord see you through. You can learn from Daniel how to keep an excellent spirit, even though some will be jealous of you. You can learn from Daniel how to endure. You can learn from Daniel how he purposed his heart and he knew he was never going to defile himself. Be like Daniel to hold fast to all that you know is right. And be like Daniel to never, never, never lose your faith in God. And to all those intercessors in the house, we cannot stop praying for our children. We can no longer pray for only our children, but we need to pray for children everywhere.
faithful in an ungodly world. We need to pray that God will give them wisdom to protect and guide them. We need to pray that they can be protected from jealousy. We need to pray that they can keep an excellent spirit. We need to pray that they will not partake of things that will defile them. Pray that they will seek the Lord. Pray that they will make great life choices. We need to pray that angels will always protect them. We can never stop praying another way for our children. Don't forget to pray for our unsaved children. Pray for children who don't know the Lord. Pray for children who caught in hellish situations. Pray that the Holy Spirit of God will draw some lost out of salvation. Now is the time to pray and not give up on our children. Amen. You know, you want to see prayer go through. Bunch of, see a bunch of women praying all night. I could have prayer prayer meetings. I tell you, I've seen women pray all night for their children. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, how can, how can I pray past 10 minutes? I said, you, you know, you pray about your children. You can pray all night. I want to learn how to be a prayer artist. I would just pray. <laughs> Getting back to Daniel. I love all the stories in the book of Daniel. Him being in, in, in captivity. His three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, being thrown into the lion's den. Where we learn all the most of the stories in the Bible from Daniel, amen. The writings on the wall from a, a mysterious hand. You know, out of nowhere, this hand just start writing on the wall. It was king of message. Stories of interpreting dreams from some of those crazy kings. Did you know that Daniel served under five kings? And they were all crazy at one time. <laughs> Amen. See, I love those stories, but the story that I've learned to love the most is found in chapter 10. Because it's very useful, useful to us when we pray. They say that the book of Daniel is one of the hardest books in the Bible to understand because it's right. Not only because it, it, it talks about past times and future times and Curious. It's hard to understand Daniel because you have to, you know, you have to understand prophecy. In my personal opinion, I believe that the reason that the book of Daniel is so hard to understand is my personal opinion is because Satan does not want you to know what goes on when you pray. He does not want to, he does not want you to know what happens when you pray. There's warfare when So let's, let's turn to the scriptures and I'm gonna, you don't have to stand, but I'm gonna read it again. Daniel chapter 10, 7 to 14, it says, I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were there with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them when they fled and hid themselves. So I was left gazing at this great vision, and I, I had no strength left. My face turned uh, deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, and my face to the ground. A hand touched me and sent me trembling on my hands and knees and said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words that I'm about to speak to you and stand up, for I have now been sent, sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, he said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard in heaven, and I have come in response yes. to them. Then here's a good part. It says, but the prince of the Persian kingdom persisted, persisted me about 21 days. Then, Dan, then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to me because I was detained there with this king of Persia. Now I came to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come in a spiritual warfare going on. See, this is a passage of scripture that shows what, what goes on when you pray. See, when you pray, know that Satan is trying to stop you from praying. He wants you to stop. He wants you to lose hope. Hmm. So getting back to the scriptures, 
scripture, here's some historical info that, I, that can help to be helpful to you. I would like to point out that during those, that, that during that time period of this passage of scripture, Daniel is an old man, probably about 80 years old at this time, and around this time the Jews would be leaving their 70-year captivity. And Jeremiah the prophet had already prophesied that they would be leaving captivity after 70 years. So he even wrote to them in exile in Babylon, saying that the Lord would bring it, would be bringing them out. See, coming to the end of this 70-year period, the spiritual, the spiritual condition of the people was shameful. They had not, they had adopted the ways of Babylon. They weren't ready to leave, which meant that God was not going to bless them. But Daniel knew he had to pray on their behalf. See, Daniel knew that repentance was necessary if they were going to be blessed. Daniel knew that from the laws given for Moses that they were that there were blessings if they obeyed the Lord and curses if they if they did not. So Daniel began to grieve and pray often. He often prayed like those sins were his own. And chapter 9 is a, is a precursor to chapter 10. It's one of the greatest intercessory prayers in the Bible. And, and Daniel was praying. He said, Lord, our God, who brought our people out of Egypt, which is with your mighty hand, who made me, who made for yourself a name that, it, that it endures. So this day we have sinned. He just goes on to pray. And he confesses not only his sins, but he speaks on, the, on behalf of the sins of, 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 of all of them. And he says, our God, hear the prayers and the petition of your servant for your sake, Lord. That's a precursor. Daniel, Daniel was an intercessory prayer. He knew how to pray. There are times when he prayed three times a day, and he prayed. So here, what's going on in chapter 10, is, is, it shows what's going on in the heavenlies. While Daniel is praying. See, Daniel had been fasting and praying for three weeks. And an angel that had been trying to get to Daniel to answer his prayers, this angel was trying desperately. You can imagine what's going on in the heavenly. This is something that's going on that can't be seen with spiritual eyes. This angel came to Daniel and was telling him what's going on. So I just want you to know there's spiritual warfare going on even when we pray. Amen. And the angel had been trying to get to Daniel to answer his prayers. And during those 21 days he had, been, he had been praying, there was a demon that had been assigned to that region. Demons do get assignments in their world. And a region is a part of a country. In this case, the region is Persia. And the region was controlled by a very powerful demon who took the role as the prince of Persia. But the prince of the Persian king persisted he said it, pers it resisted me 21 days. Then Daniel, one of the chief princes, when then Michael, one of the chief princes, 
hands were fighting. They were in conflict. If you can imagine in the heavenly when prayers are going up. You got these demonic forces. Remember, we live in a spiritual world. We, we live in a spiritual world, so you got to keep praying and pushing through. Amen. There are things that we don't see. There are things that we don't understand. Amen. But we got to keep praying. Then it said, Michael, the archangel, came to help you. So here are some things that I think can help us. See, the first thing we have to believe that there is an unseen war going on. Right. Pray. You don't believe that. Demons and principalities all over the place. When you pray, know that there are forces that want you to give up. That's why we have to fight through our prayers. That's when you pray. You have to pray. Sometimes you have to pray hard. God, forces that want us to lose our faith and lose our hope. Amen. Our, ch our children are our future. Amen. And they're worth getting on our knees. They're worth fasting and they're worth praying for. Amen. So when it comes to our children, we don't have a choice but a choice is not negotiable. Mm. Amen. Amen. See, Satan wants us to, to, to back down. The more, the, the more we pray, the harder the fight. The more we pray, the more we have to talk about the spiritual, well, just to preach this sermon, I know it was nothing, but I didn't even want to preach today. But I woke up in the morning, that burden was shifted, and I'm thinking, Lord, where did it go? Because I, I was thinking, Lord, I don't even want to preach. You know, the same can mess with you in all kind of ways. But you remove that spirit so that I can be free.
your mind to gain understanding, to humble yourself before God. Your prayers were heard in heaven, amen. And that's good news. It's good news to know that as soon as I open my mouth, the Lord knows that what I'm praying about, amen. Right away, amen. So we get all, we all get our children, our churches, our ministries. And to understand all, all this is important, we have to know what we are fighting against. And we have to know that our weapons of warfare is found through prayer. Amen. See, Satan will even mobilize everything that he can command in order to prevent a believer from praying. But our job is to pray. The angelic host of armies is, is, is fighting against the devil by the command of an almighty God. Have you ever wondered why more when the more that you the more serious you get? about warfare, more attacks are going to come from the devil. He will try and discourage us every chance he gets. He, his evil spirits will erupt in all kinds of places, so just be prepared. But know that you got Almighty God on your side who has been dispatched legions of angels to help you in the spirit realm. Amen. We have power and authority that we don't even realize. In Matthew 16 and 9 18, it says, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bid on earth, and whatever you bid in heaven, whatever is loosed on earth, will be loosed in heaven. Now that you know that, that what's going on now, that you know that you were, that you are in warfare, you had better use every weapon that the Lord has given you. One of mine is Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6. He says, first, he says, you have to be strong. Yeah. Next, you have to know that, you, that your struggle is not against flesh and blood, right. but against the rulers and authorities, against powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces, and even the evil one in the heavenly realm. And the heavenly realm. Just don't ramble through the word, through the word. let it penetrate your spirit. Put on your full armor yeah. of God.
remain on our feet. Thank you, God, for this word. Thank you, God.
this time we would like to acknowledge our visitors and in particular we'd like to recognize the illustrious Alpha 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 sorority who have graced us with their presence today. If a representative would like to to acknowledge the sorority and speak about today's significance.
morning, family. Good morning. There's a picture that's no longer at St. John's Hospital, but he's at home. Yeah. He is under the continued care of God, our Father, his loving wife, Irene, and medical staff that is there at his home. And to your continued prayers as well. Continue to pray for those others that are on the prayer list. Continue to prayer. Let us continue to be faithful to God that He is the healer. If there is any persons that are in different locations that is one in the clinical bulletin, please let me know after worship. Either let our secretary totally know. We'll follow up on that. But as far as visitation with Bedford Pinker, visitation is limited. And if you wish to visit, call Irene first. Right. It's very Amen. important that he continues his rest Amen. and his healing. So please call Irene first before you attempt to visit. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Have a blessed week. All right. Amen.
from 9 to 99, because we do have members who are 96 years old, <laughs> to uh, participate. And we will have a meeting right after service in the old four year. And the week after that is Pastor's Appreciation Day. And so we'll have a combined meeting right here. So I'll need members from the sport board, the trustee board, and all lay leaders, and all, not all members, just lay leaders, to be here the over four years. So we could uh, talk about Pastor's Appreciation Day. Uh, the new conference here is not too far away, and <coughs> For church policy, you know, it's bad as some of the pastors last year because they will retire, they will have to retire. So we want to make sure that we plan for this pastor's appreciation day, and the next pastor's appreciation day next year. So and because we want it to be grand set off. And men, I know that God is in your thoughts, He's in your prayers, and He's in your heart. I'm going to ask you for right up until Wednesday to continue to pray for the you know, sick and shut in and pray for, for male members that are away in college or incarcerated. Keep them in your prayers. And keep on um, members that, especially Rob Pinker and um, uh, John and Mike here, I've seen more. <laughs> but um, Freddie. Pretty great. Well, for, for the men's day, uh, the two men that the two men that I'm asking you to to send up a special prayer for is uh, Pinkard and a um, brother that sits over there. Adams. 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 Brother Adams. Uh, so uh, thank you, and uh, don't forget about the meeting. You need to have, have some important issues that we need to discuss. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.